Shumai, hello, I'm Lucy Jane Parenton and this is my top 20 creative and surreal self-portraits. I'm a portrait photographer from South Wales. Does the accent give it away? This short video is for the camera clubs out there that are moving their presentations online or if you're just curious about my work. In at number 20. First up, we have a photo that was taken a few years back. I was half the person I am today. Uh, it was taken on the Taff Trail, uh, not too far from up a boat. This image is a composite, which means the image you see before you is made from the blending of two or more photos to create one final image. Actually, all of my images are composites. The first photo was just the scene, nothing else. It's what I call the base. The second image is me jumping up the air, holding a golden frame. Using Photoshop, I've opened both image files and stacked a photo of myself on top of the base image. Just like when you're making paper collages, I've cut or masked out the top part of myself and my shadow. Speaking of shadows, pro tip, cloudy days without changeable lighting conditions are the best when doing composite photography. 19. Moving on, this photo was made in the same principle. The two images stuck together. In order to make these composite images, you need a time delay, say two seconds to press and pose in time, a tripod, a remote control shutter release, and a back pocket, or because women's fashion includes uh, fake pockets, I usually end up throwing or dropping the remote out to the shot. Now these options weren't available to me in this particular location, so uh, I had a little bit of help with this one. Usually I work alone, it's a nice excuse to go for a long walk by myself and get out and enjoy the fresh air. 18. I think it's really good for our well-being to spend a bit of time out in nature. But if you're in a lockdown situation, check what your government's advice is with regards to going outside. During one of my walks, this time on St. Gennard to Nelson Mountain, I found a lovely old stone wall with a hole in it. So I stuck my arm through it. Very uh, in-depth creative thinking. I like hands. Why? Because they're so expressive. I don't often include my face in images because viewers tend to be drawn straight to that and I'd rather the eyes naturally move around the image to judge what what it's about. 17. This image taken on Newton Beach on Boxing Day a few years back. It was so cold. It's titled Alone But Not Lonely and it's about being at peace with yourself, learning to like who you are. It's gonna be difficult sometimes we can all be our own worst enemies, experience bad times, feel doubt, and have anxieties. 16. With this image, I was trying to think outside of the box. This photograph was taken up Wernsey, which is just outside of Philly. You may by now have picked up an overarching narrative to the images. I have depression and anxiety, so photography is my means of expressing my experiences with mental health. In the act of making, I find great comfort and structure. 15. Now, this was shot at Forest Fawr, just uh, away from the car park. Now, we're very fortunate in Wales to have beautiful mountains, rivers and beaches on our doorstep. and. Plenty of dog walkers. I'm often asked what I'm doing, uh, why I'm taking photos. Photography is often seen as an isolating professional hobby, but you always end up chatting to someone if they see that you've got a camera. In this photo, I've cut out or masked out the middle of the frame. Many people have thought that it's a mirror, which uh, in hindsight would have been easier and quicker to do. Now, although I love using Photoshop to create my images, I do try to get as much done in camera as possible to save time when I'm on the computer at home. 14. Again, this is somewhere around Kifili Mountain and it's titled Army of Me. This is about anxiety, those intrusive thoughts that pop in your mind and you have no control over them. I mainly photograph myself and I'm often asked, why self-portraits? 
Is it narcissism? No, it's because I sucked when I started making photographs. I was embarrassed, I didn't know what all the camera buttons did and I wanted to work out how to do all the tricky stuff on my own in case I made mistakes. Which I did and that is how you learn. 13. There's also a massive convenience of photographing yourself. If you get an idea, you just do it, if the weather permits. Uh, this is an example of such a time. Uh, I drove up the Balkh mountain in the Ronza, which is uh, relatively close by. I had a few ideas I wanted to try out and this was one of them. And this is titled Resilient and was created by using free downloaded Photoshop brushes. Uh, one of the websites I often use uh, is called brushlovers.com. Who doesn't love a freebie? You can make your own or download brushes and they are wonderful to experiment with. 12. I've added fake butterflies to this photo, which were bought from what? They have a great discount craft section and you can find bits and bobs to use as props. These butterflies were photographed at various different angles they were cut out and then added using Photoshop. Wanting a contrasting colour to make the heather really pop, I draped a bundle of blue fabric over myself because I didn't have a blue dress. Much cheaper uh, than purchasing a frock that I'd only use a handful of times. Uh, this was taken in Abitridur where I grew up. 11. Back up on the Balkh mountain in the Ronda. My back was in pieces after making this photo. Using angular brushes, I painted in black segments on a separate layer. Then using the same brushes, but making them a bit smaller, I masked out or cut away the right side of myself to reveal my base layer of the landscape underneath to create an exploding effect. As complicated as some of these images may at first seem, when you break them down into working layers, there's fewer than you might think. Another tip, if you're working with multiple layers, name them so you know what each one is. 10. Watching YouTube tutorials is very handy if you want to learn how to use photo editing software. I'm completely self-taught with regards to using Photoshop, and that's all thanks to YouTube. A Photoshop is such a big and powerful program, it can do so many incredible things that it can seem a bit daunting to use. But don't worry about that, just give it a go. You'll only ever use a small percentage of the program and you only need to know what you need to know. Titled Follow, this image was shot again on Kafiri Mountain and it's a combination of uh, however many pairs of hands uh, you can see, uh, plus a base shot. Nine. It is meant to be that way up. This photograph uh, is part of an ongoing project titled Your Story, Your Words. I invited people online and at exhibitions to anonymously describe a feeling, share a poem or simply just one word about their experience with mental health. Submissions were visually responded to and post lockdown this project will resume. The people have been so generous and gifted me uh, a lot of poems they've written, lyrics, um, insights into their personal experience with mental health. This particular image is a response to the following. I feel like a fraud, unfixable and unable to truly fit in, be authentic. Eight. Mentioning earlier that it's easier to get as much done in camera as possible. For this image, I used black paint and roughly an A3 size perspex sheet to produce this um, hand stamped effect. Now this process uh, involved smearing paint on the palm of my hand and pressing it against the, the see-through sheet and then holding it in position with uh, remote control shutter release in my mouth to take the photo. I then wipe the perspex down and make another imprint and move around to fill in the space with handprints. So perspex, uh, unfortunately, is a bit shiny. You can see reflections in it. So 
I masked out the edges uh, by using a soft edge brush to sort of blend it with uh, my base shot. Seven. I had originally planned to have the whole field of floating figures, but an incoming storm made me pack up my uh, 4KA a bit early. This image, taken up Nelson Mountain, uh, really pushed my remote control. I was amazed by the distance I could get using it. It's my favourite bit of tech and only cost me £20 uh, online and it's been going for, it must be about six years. Six. Uh, there was a concerned farmer uh, hovering around for a short time when this picture was made, uh, mainly because there was two ladders, uh, a plank of wood balancing between them, and a tripod on top of that to get the uh, from above angle looking downwards. Fabric has to be my number one photography prop. Uh, you can do so much with it. Fabric features in many of my images because it's lightweight and versatile. It also acts as additional padding in my camera bag. Win-win. Five. Shot in winter on Newton Beach. This image is my visual depiction of sleep paralysis. I'm also a big Lord of the Rings fan. Photographing the sea or water is one of the few occasions where I appreciate direct sunlight to get those lovely tones. You just have to work really quick if the light conditions are changeable, which they often are in Wales. Four. It was high tide in Penarth. I picked this particular beach because during a highish tide, there's a quick drop off and the sea gets quite deep after only taking um, like a few steps out. I didn't want to risk my camera being stolen or potentially washed away, so I knew that I needed to be close by. Uh, looking at the images at home, I decided to embrace the warm tone of the water that you often get in Penarth. Uh, so I added some filters and adjustment layers in order to achieve this dreamlike orangey tone which makes the image seem otherworldly. Three. Uh, it's rare that we get a good lot of snow these days, so when we do, I am up the mountain like a shot. Unfortunately, living in Rontha, when it snows here, we get a good amount on the hills. This picture was taken at Mardi Mountain, and what you don't see, thanks to the red fabric, is that I am wearing a thermal snowsuit as it was absolutely freezing. Although it was snowing heavily uh, using free downloaded brushes, I've added on some extra snowflakes on top of the image in a new layer to create a more blizzardy scene. Two. This is another piece from the Your Story, Your Words ongoing project. The accompanying text is, a shadow attached to your soul forever that you can never cut away. I had a helping hand to make this image, uh, my partner who is often roped into my photo experiments, thank you Matthew, uh, is the hand model you see here. I tend to plan out my photos before I head out so I know what props and equipment to take with me. However, uh, this is an example of when you get home and the plan goes a little bit stray. So once the layers were all cut out, uh, Matthew, who was hiding behind me in these shots, was masked out. It just lacked a certain something. Playing around with the adjustment layers, I decided to change the colour of his hands to make the image pop. Not something I had planned or envisioned doing. One. Final top place for now, it changes. Uh, my number one is a safe place. Whilst making another photo one day, I spotted a big pile of recently felled trees and branches uh, all cut up um, and left a few paces away from the main pathway by Castle View in Caerphilly. So I went back with two ladders, a plank of wood and balanced the tripod on top to get this uh, from above angle looking downwards. It's good exercise carrying all that. I built a small nest out of the branches and with a bit of Photoshop trickery, I add, then added layers to extend it outwards. 
Y'all come with you, thank you for watching. So that's my top 20 self-portraits. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to visiting uh, the camera clubs again when it's safe to do so. Um, maybe this has inspired you to take a selfie. So get creative and keep safe.